approaching helicopter for a buzz. Let's see, here we are. In early morning close up, friends. Your taxes for gang stalking? Psychological warfare harassment for uploading reptilian shapeshifter movies to YouTube. Notice once he's passed by, it turns off. Your taxes, friends. We're in, in sort of history and cultures, and ancient sects particular, uh, and site, sites, even ancient sites, can we see reptilian uh, symbolism that's, uh, that, we, that we should recognize? You won't see it very clearly. Um, one of the important things throughout all of their interaction with humanity was not to be recognized and not to be seen because humans record humans record in stone we're very good at that we create we're fantastic like that as a race so they they, they recreate and the reptilians didn't want that um you will see it occasionally in some of the um sumerian or assyrian babylonian carvings occasionally you will also see it in some of the mayan or aztec uh, items. What you're much more likely to see are, are renditions of feline species from, from the Egyptian times because they weren't covered by the same protocol. So they weren't, um, there was no ban on um, depicting them, whereas there is a ban, there still is now a ban on depicting reptilians and I'll give you uh, absolute proof of that. When I did that very nice interview on the uh, Today program with Holly Willoughby and Schofield, and I did two drawings, one of uh, a mantid and one of a reptile, and I was told point blank, we're not allowed to put the reptile up, because they were gonna have me as a backdrop, uh, them as a backdrop to me, so uh, the stills I've got, which they very kindly sent me, now I'm being interviewed with them, and behind me is a picture of the mantid, but originally, Schofield and gang were gonna have the mantid and the reptile, and somebody very high up said, we're not allowed, they didn't even know what it was called, all they said to me was, we've been told we can't put this one up. So there's a, a, a blanket that goes out, and hence, if you think about what your title of this DVD is, because we're coming around to that now, and you think about that chapter in The Greatest Secret that David Icke wrote, which was don't mention the reptiles, and that's, that's a fact, and David is absolutely right, that the, the system doesn't want to publicize them because they have signed an agreement not to publicize them is to keep them out. So you can talk about the greys as much as you want. That's not an issue. You can talk about the mantids as much as you want because they don't manipulate humanity. The reptile race that we're talking about manipulates humanity and has done for thousands of years and has a covenant with the elite humans who run the world that they will always be in the shadows. Now I don't know, but when I think about the ETs, you, there's this dark feeling. I know a lot of you have that same experience. Even if you know you're not sure whether there's you know benevolent ETs, uh, I mean, you know, in, in even much more responsible beings than us, uh, and and more morally upright. And we don't know because what we don't have access, but. There's, I think, and speaking of, of which is kind of interesting, you know, it's, it's come to me more solidly why uh, there is a truth embargo. And what I would just say about it is this, without having to get into a more detailed explanation, is that basically it's not just that some wicked beings, which there are, obviously, and and they just don't want us to know the truth because they are using us in an evil way. It's not just that. It's a larger God type purpose is my, is my feeling about it. Um, it's just that, that would be my sense about it. Also considering that um, if all of the reports of the cosmos and the testimony of somebody like William Weiss, 23 Minutes in Hell, where Jesus took him above the earth and showed him the earth, and, and then not only that, but showed him the cosmos and showed him his power, let him feel his power over the cosmos. And 
all the stuff that's going on, all those different, various different beings. If that is a delay, then it says something in particular that Azrael was required to not tell me what's going on as far as, you know, he, he basically lied to my face, but I'm not gonna blame him for that because I think that was, I think he was doing his duty. And his duty is to not report the wider cosmos to Earthlings because of a purpose that the Lord has, which we may not be able to readily grasp or have authority to really make any comment either way, which is why we can't grasp it, <laughs> or vice versa, whatever the case might be. But what we've got is that there's a reason that Earth humans are not given general access to beings off planet. Now, what I was gonna say about the whole ET thing, as I think about it, like I was thinking about, you know, okay, if we could, we could talk to some ETs and, 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 you know, do some stuff, but the fantasy that runs in my mind about it, the, the scenario that comes up, is that when I encounter them, they'll have really dark karmic uh, aspect. Like, I'll be like, woo boy, that's some seriously dark karma you got going there. Um, I mean, I don't know, but I'm thinking that that might be the case. Beautiful woman's on the street here. I, I can't see in the viewfinder, but um, I like the white hair, near white hair. But uh, the thing is that I, I just had, like, when I think about an encounter with them, that's that's what I, I think I'm gonna run into, and that in in the back of my mind, I see. I, I think there's a temptation that might be non having to do with reality to think that something's evil when you're a believer, when you know that God's word is true, and all this stuff about demons, angels, heaven and hell, all the history in the Bible and everything else, and all the scripture and all that's true. Um, and you know that basically the world is a deception trap of the devil, which minus the knowledge of God, everyone of these souls falls into. I was just listening to some guy talking on this uh, paranormal channel about how uh, he did this long investigation and he finally figured out that what's really going on with the tunnel and the white light when you die and everything is that the, the whole thing is basically that our, our souls are being uh, used in an evil way but we keep reincarnating because when we go into the tunnel in the white light and these beings show us our past lives and they say, hey, yeah, you gotta go back to, uh, uh, you know, clean up this bad karma thing, or whatever, blah, 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 you know, you didn't finish this work or whatever, um, then what you hit, what, what happens is they just, just get tricked. You just keep coming back and, and what it is is because they feed off of louche or negative energy, negative, negative uh, emotions is what they feed off of. And when you've got that, um, then what they want to do is keep recycling souls back into the world, tricking them into coming back here, but they wipe their memory every time. And But you also have some rare and people that do actually retain their memory. But for the most part, uh, people get recycled back and they don't retain any memory. Many researchers talk about the, 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 the reptilian net, oh, that's the name they thought they would give it. I, is that an analogy for our consciousness? Sort of, we go, we get beyond the net once we sort of become consciously aware. Or is that, or is it a physical uh, net that stops souls sort of exiting and, and incarnating, reincarnating? The machine that creates that net is physical. There is a machine, or a set of machine, a set of boosters, which create that energetic field. A net's quite a good word. I call it the grid but I can go with the word net. I think the net's probably better because when we talk about the grid, I know lots of researchers get confused with the Earth's own grid, but we're talking now about a, a, an artificial grid that's generated around the planet uh, by very, very physical machines, but create a, an unseen energetic field which um, captures 
any soul from leaving the planet or nearly any soul from leaving the planet and also prevents any soul from entering the planet wipes that soul's memory completely clear and then that soul is placed back into another body now the reason for that is very very simple let's take a great man Albert Einstein imagine Albert Einstein living till he was 90 and dying reincarnating another body and remembering every experiment he'd ever done. Do you know, within three Albert Einstein's lifetimes, we'd be going to, you know, Jupiter and back in, 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 in a bus. And so if you have a, a situation where you wish to keep humans under control, you cannot allow them to remember what they've done because they will outstrip you because humans are fantastic creatures and they will do that. Sometimes it breaks down and I've given a conference where I, I looked after um, John Lennon's dad's children and as a five-year-old boy he played for me um, a piano concerto, Beethoven piano concerto with no music. Now how can a five-year-old child be a grand master at chess or a beautiful artist or play the piano? What's happened there is the soul that's gone into that child hasn't been completely wiped and it has remembered and they're called, aren't they called prodigate children or the wonderful children? The reality, of course, is science doesn't want to face the truth, which is the soul that incarnated in that child is regaining its memory. So it's not infallible. The, there are people who uh, don't get their memories completely wiped. Now, um, I think that there's some truth to that. I think that there's, that there, that, that is, um, in, in, you know, one way to look at what's going on. But I look at it from the perspective of God accomplishing a work with the world, otherwise known as the foundation of the world. You'll see in scripture that, you, that, that, that term, foundation of the world, which I believe is the, it's, it's hell school earth, basically. Uh, learning how to be our perfect human selves through all kinds of experiences both of good and of evil, but largely of evil because we end up being beings of goodness. We want to be people who are worthy, lawful, and by lawful I mean like minus sin, minus a propensity to sin and even a, a built-in shield against sin through experiences of being everything that we're not, doing everything that we shouldn't, or so I think. But the interesting thought that I keep coming back to about that is are um, at least maybe most of the beings that we've got out there in the cosmos, or at least maybe, I don't know, a lot of the ones that are here or, or, or whatnot, or that we you know encounter, like you know, the greys, the reptilians, the tall whites, the uh, felines, the canines, or, you know, wolfmen, if there are um, other um, ET beings that are not, um, as uh, that one guy, William Schollenblon, said, um, either vampires or werewolves, as you become through these satanic blood-drinking rituals of some kind, and you and you can actually become a vampire or a werewolf and other people maybe that get turned into beasts for other reasons because what we know from scripture is that the angel of heaven was was a sataniel and then uh, angel of hell is satan so we don't know whether um, the beings that are out in the cosmos or largely what we encounter are actually descendants of the fallen angels existing through ancient ancient time and, and that fall from that fall from heaven that those beings underwent um, was much more ancient than than we can realize we're talking like millions of years back maybe even possibly billions who, know, who knows and that um, if that's the case then the 6,000 years covered by scripture Right, so it's it's covered. It covers seven thousand years total, and we're coming up on the end of the um, sixth. So it's so we're going to start on the seventh, the, the the final thousand years. But but that's just a tiny fraction 
of time that's that's been out there and uh, you know there's a line from this one anime where this uh, this one guy who was like this evil imposter named Kagako, Kagato uh, trying to usurp the um, Dryan throne and, and uh, one thing I remember him saying was um, if you experience what it's like fighting in desperation out in the darkness of the universe like the dark universe and then that kind of um, reminded me of the fact that you see those um, the xenomorph aliens with the elongated skull there but they have no eyes and it's kind of like scary looking but in in their dark universe um, there's there's no light so uh, or where, wherever they were from or however they were they were created converted into beasts former angels whatever but they're they're adapted to survive in a in in little or no light whatsoever so they use like what bats use to see basically all right so i'm putting this uh new zve1 through its paces and uh seeing how so far it's awesome because it's got the um Software, not hardware, but software stabilization, allowing me to get steady shots on unstabilized lenses. This is the, a kit lens that is stabilized, but um, I have only one other lens uh, that's an art lens, this, the 16 millimeter Sigma. And uh, with that thing, there's no stabilization. And so um, even handheld shots, a lot of times, it's mostly unusable because it's so shaky. But uh, this allows, it's still, still walking shots are pretty tough, but you can still get um, more, much more usable shots at the cost of a crop. But not as good as a GoPro for sure. Yeah, so uh, I was just reading in Zechariah and uh, a lot of interesting stuff, even though it's a, it's a relatively small book in the, uh, in the scripture. But... Uh, it's filled with all kinds of interesting information, but um, I just wanted to be honest about something, you know, just again while I'm thinking about it. Um, a lot of times when I, when I read that stuff about prayer, now I, I've told you guys that straight up, um, I never understood it. Like, you know, and not that I am in any way speaking against it, maybe, maybe subconsciously, but no, I mean, I know prayer is something that is good, you're supposed to do it yada yada um, even though there are as, as I said I believe that the Lord hides his face from certain people for various reasons um, especially his, his own people who sinned against him and the scripture says that no man lifts up his head to, to uh, call on the Lord because he has hidden his face from us for our sin and and uh, so but even even with that you know um, I I and, and, I, and I felt that that applied to me, um, although I'm not a Jew, but um, because other people that I spoke with that I don't think they were lying to me, and not only that, other people that I um, heard, they um, got, got, you know, some kind of uh, reaction from their prayer, you know, something happened, they heard from the Lord something, you know, even my Anna, who I knew personally, and I completely trusted, she said that, um, in order to get an answer from the Lord, she prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed, and finally, she got that answer. Um, you know why she why she couldn't get me out out of her system. She couldn't wash me off of her. The message came back: protect a priest. By which I knew I'm a priest, but it's tough for me to say that I'm a priest um, because I'm not. Def I'm definitely not a normal kind of priest. You know, like with the little collar and everything, and preaching to a, a you know a, a, a church, but. Um, Rather, just I think priest just means servant of the Lord. Either that, or I, I just haven't done what I should be doing, or or haven't figured it out yet, or it's not my time. But I think everybody comes into the knowledge that they need to come into, um, especially if you're you know at least somewhat intelligent and you can understand the scripture and and get a lot out of it, and and not only that, but relay it to people. At least, at least speak what you, of what you've learned to the edification of others. But when I read, when I read that scripture a lot of times and talking about prayer, talking about people going up to the house of the, of the Lord and praying and so forth, I just, um, 
probably what what it boils down to is is my heart isn't unified with it just like um, Peter was um, he, well, you know his heart was imperfect towards the Lord which is why he said lovest thou me James lovest thou me James lovest thou me James and he was grieved and he said you know I do Lord but it was because his heart was was imperfect towards it my heart's imperfect towards God I know that um, I mean I, I've definitely in, in the way that I behave, I can't say that I'm like a, you know, if you say, you, you know, are you 100% are you loyal to God? No. That's my answer. And somebody asked me, do you know, you know, when we were talking, finally he says, you know, we're talking about Jesus and, and, uh, and the scripture and everything and Christianity. And he says, so do you know the Lord? And I said, no. And he goes, why not? And I said, I've never met him. But I know what he meant. So he meant, do you, do, you, do you know him through his word? And I still say no. Um, I know of him. I have some knowledge. I wouldn't say that I uh, that I know him through his words. I would say I know of him. I have some knowledge, but actually, I understand relatively. Well, I was I don't know relatively. I mean, compared to other people, I seem, seem to know a lot more and a lot more correctly, at least in my estimation. I shouldn't judge. Like I said, some of these people may be hearing from the Lord, maybe hearing from angels on a regular basis. And they're praying all the time. Me, I get the total feeling. It was, it was just, just, just like talking to the wall. And finally, um, you know, like I said, when I got sick with that pneumonia, after I had been praying specifically not to get sick, it just, you know, may, maybe my heart rebelled. But on the other hand, I, I, I just got to the feeling like, wait a minute, wait a minute, there's something so wrong here with it that I can't in good conscience do it when I don't believe in it. It lacks integrity to sit there praying like you're talking with somebody, either asking something or you know, um, uh, you know, having reverence or uh, making supplications, whatever it is that people do in prayer. But if I don't, if I if I don't feel it, and it doesn't feel right to me, it, does, it lacks integrity to sit there to keep keep doing it. That's that's what it felt like to me. And uh, I haven't prayed since. I just don't get it. Um, I mean, I feel like if if you're if you're close to God. Or if you're if you're on the right track, um, you should be doing whatever it is you should be doing, um, and God will. I mean, I, I can tell you one thing as far as like quick contact is when I'm doing something wrong. Um, I usually hear about it pretty quick. I mean, as far as like a punishment goes, it seems to me, or or eventually I'll hear about it. You know, like something something that He's displeased with with my life, something that I'm doing. I hear about it pretty quick, you know, like I we could be teaching about that forever, proofs of instruction of the way of life. But uh, I think probably um, maybe a lot of people that uh, get something out of my humble little vlogs that are massively shadow bands, only a few of you actually uh, find my movies in your feed or even think about me or remember me because uh, Satan also probably causes you to forget me as well. Um, they're, they're, you're, you, you may be kind of like me, you know, you're kind of like, well, I have to be I have to be real with myself, um, which is not I don't think that's the same as leaning into your own thinking. I think you you just you have to be somewhat real, otherwise you, it lacks integrity. Um, which I mean, my integrity is thin as it is. It always has been a little bit, you know. Um, stealing, stealing, stealing. Not that I really had like a problem of being like a, a, a chronic criminal thief, but you know anything like that but just you know little stuff you know like it, it as a Christian for over 20 years it somehow didn't occur to me that this video site that I had thought was legitimate and paid for and then found out it wasn't there would be a cost if I continued to use them it would be stealing and I didn't figure it out until I was punished and just went oh so um, you do what you can, you know. You 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 speak to what what level you're at, and more advanced people can speak to more advanced people. I guess I don't know, but uh, I, I'll say this though: um, either I haven't run into them or heard them. Um, these you know folks, as far as like godly people, preachers, and so forth, um, they can speak in a more skilled way on a lot of things, but altogether it doesn't mean that they're that they're right. Um, it, it means um, that they can speak well and they can remember scripture, but in a lot of cases, in my opinion, they have it so wrong, 
so as to make me think that uh, they are of the second line upon line from Isaiah 28, which is the building of, of wrong knowledge, builds up more wrong knowledge on top of that, and then it's even more confused, and then even more wrong knowledge built on top of that foundation of, of wrong knowledge, and um, until um, they are broken and snared and taken, as the scripture says. Uh, and this, uh, not that this proves it, but this kind of matches what it says. I have hidden it from the wise and prudent and revealed it unto babes. Um, which may mean that, um, you know, if you're not wise and prudent, you're just, you know, basically an idiot, maybe like me, but just slightly more than would make you a complete idiot, but because you fear the Lord and you um, believe in Jesus Christ, and not that many people um, that are, are out there that are not necessarily very skilled or, or, or whatever, or very intelligent, have a sincere belief. Also in Zechariah is that thing with the, the same thing as in Isaiah 66 where it's, you know, people do this and that, you know, in their religious uh, functions, their whatever they do, but it's all bullshit basically. And let your, let your yes be yes and your no be no and don't screw people over basically. You know, be, be a righteous man, do, do good. But don't, you know, but, but all these various religious profunctions that these people do are actually their own ways. That's what Isaiah 60, the first part of Isaiah 66 is, is saying. Um, that uh, these people have created their own religious stuff, but God never ordered it. And or the, the situation has come to where um, maybe they had, maybe in, in reality it was the same thing with them that I experienced. It lacks integrity because you don't buy it. You straight up don't buy it. There's something about it you just don't buy. You can't understand it. It's just, just you know, this, this doesn't have integrity because you just, you just keep doing this, you know, whatever this thing you're, you, you think you're supposed to do. But when, when the, the rubber meets the road and you're trying to, you know, figure out whether you should be doing it or not because there's, you know, you really, if you're, if you're on the right track, you know, maybe you should either, either hear from God or something else. And, uh, but you don't, you don't hear anything else. And you, it feels like, um, it's meaningless. It's not doing anything. So then it lacks integrity. Stop doing it and just, just focus on being a righteous man. Which is, which is maybe but what essentially the end time boils down to, or even back in, in Zechariah's day, you know, people doing this, like it, it, in that part when I was talking about the, the religious stuff being bullshit, it was talking about fasts. And God was saying, did you fast unto me? Did you pray unto me? Did you uh, uh, mourn unto me? No, you did it for yourselves. You, you, you fasted unto yourselves, you ate to yourselves. And uh, and then he goes on basically to say, you know, but but rather just just be righteous, just just do right in your life as a man. Whatever you you know you do as a man, you do your work, you you deal with your family, do it righteously. And this is more acceptable to God. No, it's 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 only acceptable acceptable to God because he did, he wants people who realizes the religious bullshit is what I'm thinking. Now I've been you guys you guys know I've been talking about that for a long time. Talking to me, and I've been with with what I think has happened, and and maybe the case now, is that actually the it, not of course that when God tells somebody to do these specific instructions, you know, to set out the bowls and and this and that, you know, for the for the religious rites and everything. Of course, that's that's all per perfect and holy, and those people are doing what they should be doing. Of course. Not, not saying that all religious actions, but what happens is that in our, perhaps in our fallen state, minus a very specific ministry, we tend to fall into a lack of integrity, a lack of, uh, of it being real somehow or connected somehow. And it's a, it's a means to test integrity because you know there's some part of you and, and common sense you know that comes with with absolute righteousness within strength of the heart to say to yourself wait a minute you know what everybody else is saying you should be doing this but I'm getting the I'm getting the smell of bullshit here 
yeah I'm, yep I think that's I think that's straight up shit and uh, you know I don't want to be doing it don't want to be doing it if you're watching this it's not too late say this prayer now father in heaven please save my soul by the work of your son Jesus on the cross and show me your pure words in the authorized King James Bible.